Win free airtime with hashtag learn on one. Share your comments on the lessons. SMS your feedback. Name and town to 555. Hashtag learn on one. Invite learning in. Europe as countries scramble to slow a second wave of coronavirus infections. We're live on Capitol Hill as Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett faces another day of questioning by U.S. Senators. Less than three weeks to the U.S. election will bring you a special report from Atlanta on claims that some African Americans are being prevented from voting. Those fighting and documenting what they consider voter suppression here say some tactics are deliberate, others just sheer incompetence. And the rift between Princes William and Harry. A new book says they were crossing swords even before Harry met Meghan. We speak to the author. Hello, welcome to BBC World News. In an hour and a half, Donald Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Amy Coney Barrett, will sit down to face the third day of her confirmation hearings in the U.S. Senate. During Tuesday's marathon session, Judge Barrett repeatedly declined to answer questions from Democrats about her views on issues such as abortion, gay rights and health care. But here's what she had to say about the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. It looks likely to end up before the Supreme Court shortly after the election. Any issue that would arise under the Affordable Care Act or any other statute should be determined by the law, by looking at the text of the statute, by looking at precedent, um, the same way that it would for anyone. And if there were policy differences or policy consequences, those are for this body. Um, for the court, it's really a question of adhering to the law and going where the law leads and leaving the policy decisions up to you. Let's take you live now to the U.S. Capitol building. Our Washington correspondent, Barbara Plett Usher, is there for us. Barbara, what can we expect today? Lucy, I think we can expect more of the same. It's another full day of questioning, and each senator gets another round. And what we have seen is that the Democrats, they know they can't stop this vote. They don't have the votes to stop this appointment. They've been using their time to make their case to the American people about the perceived threats of a conservative majority court, especially to health care, as you were hearing there, but also to abortion and civil rights. We might get less speechifying today and more questions uh, of Amy Coney Barrett, although it's hard to see her answering differently this time than, other ta than yesterday, uh, because she is basically following the standard or the norm for these hearings and that she doesn't want to um, show any, imp any partiality. She wants to show judicial impartiality and so doesn't want to talk to specifics. Although, of course, Lucy, this climate is much more politically charged because President Trump has uh, said, has made comments on how he wants the Supreme Court to rule on some of these issues, like abortion and like the election. And I think we can also expect the Republicans to continue with their approach, which has been to basically give her time and opportunities to defend herself from Democratic uh, attacks and concerns. Barbara, are there things, though, that she said yesterday that people are seizing on and perhaps, you know, reading her intentions into it? Today, we are busy with the economic ordinary Namibian syllabus. We are still busy with 1.1. We look at point C, which is about the opportunity cost. But to understand point C, you must also know what's happening in point B, which we have done in the previous lesson, where we talk about the economic problem, which calls scarcity. So, Today's lesson will be about opportunity cost and how to answer practical questions on that. I just want to share some secrets. 
that will help you to improve your marks or your students marks and this is that you must always repeat what you have done the previous day to test the students knowledge and to recall do they still understand the difference between a want and a need do they still understand what is the economic problem and then what is the causes of this economic problem where uh, resources are limited and wants is unlimited okay you can also the group work or the homework of the previous lesson you can also discuss and look at that and make sure that every student understand the difference between what is unlimited wants for the government and what is limited resources uh, of the government okay on the board you have an example of opportunity costs but firstly uh, we will look at this example and then we will come to a definition of how we will define if they ask us in a question which they like to do ask us in a question define opportunity costs and such a question can easily count between three and five marks so we must be ready for this opportunity cost can be explained with the following example a business like Verman and Brock uh, who mainly sell food wants to open separate sections in their store say for example they want to open a clothing brand section and they want to open also a section where they can sell tools they don't have the space in their store for both of these departments so they decide then to um, make a decision and to choose then on their own uh, or to make a decision and choose which one they is their first choice and which one they will forgo okay Firstly, you ask the question, who is the decision maker in this situation? And obviously, it's the owners or the management of Burman and Brock. And secondly, you ask the question, uh, what is my limited resource? Now, in this case, it is not money, but it is the space, the floor space that is the limited resource. Um, and then your following question will be uh, as we have said if you have unlimited ones and limited resources you are put in a situation where you must make a decision where you must choose due to scarcity and if you decide on what you want in this case Burman and Brock decide that they want the food, uh, clothing section and they will give them up the tool section so if you have answered all these questions you actually know what opportunity cost is if we uh, define opportunity cost in short we can say that it is the cost of the good or the service we forego for our first choice or our best option and in the case of Burman and Brock their best option were the clothing section or this clothing department and what they forgo was the two section and the cost of that of what they forgo is your opportunity cost so let us do the more questions that you can understand this um, they say that you must use the information in the definition given to explain opportunity cost in a situation. So, as I've said, if you take the Burman and Brock situation, you explain, you can't just for five marks say um, it's opportunity cost is the cost of the good and service I forgo. You must put the examples given to you in this situation you start by saying that my un 
Boerman and Brock's uh, wants is unlimited. They want a clothing department and they want a two department. Their space is limited. That is the limit resource. So you identify the unlimited one and the limited resource. Then the third and the next point, you will say that this causes scarcity. So we are forced to make a choice. And then Burman and Brock make the choice. They decide on the clothing department and they give up the tool department. And the tool department that they give up is the opportunity cost. Because opportunity cost is the cost of the good and the service I forego. If you answer it in exactly in that order or in that understandable way, then you will, can easily get five marks for a question like that or for your answer, which you have offered to that question. Okay, we look at a different example for opportunity cost that you can make sure you understand how to answer it in a test or an exam. In this example given to you on the PowerPoint, you will see that uh, the student left school they started a full-time job, but now they have the option to go and attend night classes in accounting, um, or they can train every night of the week to get into the Namibian soccer team. So what is the ones for this? Who is the decision maker? You can first ask. The decision maker is the student, the individual, what is the, his unlimited wants? His wants is to study at night uh, and he also have a want that he wants to try and get into the Namibian soccer team, so he wants to train every night. So he obviously can't do both. Why? Because he has a limited resource and the limited resource for him is time in this case. So we have now seen money can be a limited resource. We, could, we have looked at Burman and Brock and see their floor space is a limited resource. But in this case, time for the student is a limited resource. So the question that can be asked in a test or a exam to a student is use the information above and discuss the opportunity cost with the use of scarcity and choice. So by that, I'm actually telling you that you don't only give me the definition. What is the definition? Opportunity cost is the cost of the good and the service I forego for my best option. So you can't just do that because you must include scarcity and choice. So, and if you do that, it will also not bring you to five marks. So, if I must start a question like this, and I must answer it, I will start with what is my limited resource in this case, that it is the time for the student, what is his unlimited ones, the soccer training, and his accounting classes, and then I will, for the third point, say the score scarcity, because he can't do both. He uh, is, he is put in a situation where he must choose and if he made the decision uh, he can say for example that he will train continue to train for his soccer uh, or soccer every night to try to get into the Namibian team the opportunity cost of the situation will be what he forgo and what he forgo is the accounting classes which he can't attend. That will allocate five marks to you if you explain it in that way. We have an extra question for you which you can use in an exam or in a test for your students. Um, here is an example on how you can test the students on this topic. Uh, for define opportunity cost, you can allocate three marks to it. And then you can give them an article from the newspaper, which you copy paste 
uh, and then you ask a question, uh, say, we have, for example, here that the government want to build an office block or they want, uh, want to build hostels for students. And in this case, you can use this information from an article like this example and discuss the scarcity in choice and opportunity cost for this situation. This can bring you five marks or they can allocate five marks to an answer like this. Um, after you have marked this, you can discuss this with your students. In conclusion, you must be able to explain the definition of opportunity cost and explain opportunity cost in a day-to-day -day situation. From an individual's point of view, like we have done now from the student, from a business point of view, where we have taken Burman and Brock into consideration, and from the government's point of view, where we said the government need to build schools and need to buy cars for the police. And in any of that situation, there is opportunity cost involved. So you can, in any situation in the newspaper, you can also see articles where the or a business or an individual or the government are put in a situation where they must choose. Win free airtime with One Africa TV. Share your comments on the channel. WhatsApp your feedback, name and town to 081-200-6659. One Africa TV. It just gets better. Today. Today's economic lesson of the Namibian NECC ordinary syllabus is 1.2, which is about economic resources, and of 1.2 we discuss the A part, where we discuss these different factors of production. So you can pick up from my um, sentence that factors of production and economic resources is the same. So you can all call it the one or the other one. So this is what today's lesson will be about. Um, but to refer back to our previous lessons, can anybody remember what is scarcity? Remember scarcity we have said? where we have limited resources and unlimited ones, and scarcity, the implication of scarcity is that we must make a decision and must choose. Okay, so we are back. We have referred a little bit to previous work that we have done, uh, but we are back at the factors of production, which we all have on the board also. And as I've already said, that it can also be called economic resources or just resources of a country. So remember that if you get a question on that, that you uh, don't think it is something else if they talk about economic resources or resources. Okay, land is a natural resource. Um, it is normally said that it is extract from nature. An example of land can be like gold or fish 
that is examples of land. Then if we look at labor, labor is also called a human resource. This human, uh, in this human resource, human effort is used in the production process of goods and services. Labor can be divided in skilled labor. Skilled labor is normally somebody that goes through training like a teacher or an engineer and that um, they are qualified as an engineer and they um, are skilled then, seen as a skilled worker. A semi-skilled worker is somebody, for example, who have learned a trade like sewing, say, for example, uh, working in a business where they sew jackets for schools or track suits for schools. So you have learned something, you have a specific skill, but it's very limited and, and it's also of short training, like a month or three months or something like that. That is examples. Okay, then we have unskilled labor. They are, this is workers that didn't go through any training at all. And this is workers that, for example, that clean the school grounds or clean the hostels, they can be seen as unskilled workers. In our country, the majority of our workers is unskilled workers, but that we will come to at a different point in the syllabus when we talk about employment and unemployment. Okay, then, um, the third resource, as you can see here, is a capital resource. This capital resource is also called a manufacturing resource. Um, this, in the, this resource is used to produce the final goods and services that me and you are using every day, like the t-shirt you wear or the school pants you wear, that is final goods. Um, Capital goods, we can divide in two types. They divide it in a fixed capital. That is like a washing machine. You can reuse this product and reuse it for many years. Or a fridge that you have in your house that you reuse and reuse. But another form of capital is working capital. And working capital is like if you are in an office and you use the paper, the paper that you use in the office, you can only use once. Perhaps recycle it and use it another time. But normally these type of products, these working capital, is also an example which perhaps is more, uh, you know more about it, is the fertilizers that they use in the soil before they prepare the land for planting maize. So that is a type of working capital. It's also a product that can be used, but it's finished after, after a short while. So um, they don't last very long, this working capital. It is a finish after one or two uses, and uh, that is normally also your seeds not only fertilizers, but seeds can also be used as that. So again, capital can be divided in working capital and fixed capital, and you must know the difference between that. Okay, the last one is entrepreneurship. Last of your factors of production. Entrepreneurship is this factor of production combine all the other factors of production in a unit to produce the final good and service. So features of an entrepreneur that function as uh, this factor of production will be somebody that have managing skills, somebody that can take risks, somebody that is reliable and responsible, um, somebody can manage funds for this product or plan that he have, or, 
and can get it together, not only by himself, but, but by looking for investors. So that means the managing of this funds to achieve his aim. This um, person is normally very creative, and this person also come up with ideas and plans and how to achieve his plans. Um, this is characteristics of an entrepreneur and which will help that the entrepreneur is also more successful. Okay, here is classwork that you can use in your class. The, um, for example, I can ask a student, explain the factor of production labor, and that in short, in that you can, for two marks, if you are t ask for two marks, then you just say factor of production. Labor is a human uh, resource. In this factor of production, they use the human efforts to produce. So those people work on the lands in, uh, on a farm, that is the human effort that was used to produce, say, for example, the carrots or the millies, which we have. Okay, and then um, you can ask another question, discuss the difference between skilled, semi-skilled and unskilled labor with examples. Or you can, in a question like this, give an article on somebody that is employed somewhere and then ask the question that the students identify if this person is a skilled worker and then they must give reasons or an unskilled worker and give reasons for that. In newspapers like this, you get lots of advertisements for different jobs. So in that case, you can easily see or use one of these examples and then you can um, supply, cut that and give it to a student that he identify for you the, um, if it is skilled or semi-skilled labor. Okay, and then I have also for you exam questions um, or test questions which you can use. Explain the difference between fixed and working capital. That can be tested for four marks. Um, discuss when somebody can be classified as an entrepreneur. So then you bring up the different characteristics and features that an entrepreneur must possess. And um, then explain eco uh, what economic resources consist of. So for a question like that, I can ask at least eight marks because you will mention all of that and you will have a short explanation on all of that. Um, and that can give you easily eight marks. So I can ask like in the homework only one of that or I can ask in an exam all of it and then it will bring you to eight marks. Okay, for today, this is the end of today's lesson. Thank you very much. Free airtime with hashtag learn on one. Share your comments on the lessons. WhatsApp your feedback, name and town to 081 200 6659. Hashtag learn on one. Invite learning in.